Okay, stand up, quick, quick. It's got it. We've got. To, it's timed. Okay. Uh, so you all love maps, right? Now sit down if you never have to make a map. Right. So you're still standing. Uh, right. Now sit down if you um, have a qualification in cartography. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sit down anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> So let's start with the definition. Um, I'm still standing, which means I know something about maps, hopefully. Um, this is a definition of cartography. Uh, we always have to start with the definition. Um, and what I'm going to show you is a map. Uh, here's a map, and this one is one of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals on employed people below the international poverty line. Let's make a map. Let's make a great map. Here's a default. We've poured our point data into the map. It sits within each of the country boundaries. And there's the map, right? Let's go home. Let's go and have a beer. But it doesn't really tell us very much. So there's my, my, my map. Um, I've created a Coropleth map showing um, where there are higher and where there are lower um, countries above and below the poverty line. But it's no good without a legend, so let's put a legend on. Um, that now tells you we've got a beautiful set of rainbow colors, so I can now tell you which is higher and lower. And our legend is to several decimal places, as we all know is perfect, which doesn't work. So we improve the legend. Uh, we changed the colours, so we now have a meaningful low to high colour ramp, and the legend's a bit more understandable. Uh, the legend title, here's a GIS joke, uh, we don't use shapefiles anymore, so we might want to change the legend title to uh, something a little more appropriate. Um, but we've got five classes there, it doesn't really give us much information, so let's change it, let's change it to an unclassed map. Um, well, that's great. Now every single country has a different colour, and it's good for extremities, but not so good necessarily for looking at uh, places that are, share similar characteristics. And the legend really doesn't very help very much. We just go from light to dark. Uh, we don't even know what the units are. It's just poverty. 4,000 watt? I don't know. Um, so we're back to the five-class map. It looks a bit different, because now we're using natural breaks instead of equal interval, um, which at least means we should be thinking about the, po the distribution of the data um, in the map that we're mapping. Um, we've now put some units in the legend that make a bit more sense, so it's a little bit better than the default. Um, so there's one problem with that map, it was totals. This is now showing proportions, ratios, percentages. In fact, it's percentages, so we start to build a visual comparison for our data uh, by using percentages, whereas totals don't work on a choropleth. I know you all know that, but I'm just telling you anyway. Um, so now we get uh, Afghanistan and Thailand showing up as most instead of Montenegro and India, which was on the uh, previous map. Um, let's do some other things, designy stuff. Remove the base map, Coropleth's its own base map. Change the fonts, make them lighter. Use light greys, not solid blacks. Uh, make the legend text smaller. You do not need Comic Sans and Papyrus, even though we can all consistently make a joke about it. Recede the borders, use contrast. Change the bloody projection. Um, so we don't need to use Mercator anymore. This is an echo at the four equal area projection, which supports that visual comparison across different countries. Um, so we now have an equal area to assess our data visually for. Um, I'm going to change the projection again. Um, look how fantastic that change is. Um, that's now the e brand new Equal Earth projection. Um, if you haven't heard about the Equal Earth projection, go and have a look at it. Uh, Google it. Uh, it's developed by a colleague of mine, plus Tom Patterson, Bernie Yenny. Uh, it's great. Why don't we use it? We should do. Um, design your pop-ups. They don't look like that on my computer, I can tell you. Um, you don't have to use a choropleth. You could use proportional symbols if you're too lazy to convert your totals into percentages, which I know is really difficult in Excel. Um, but, you know, think about mapping using different types. Avoid overlaps, though, if you can, because it gives false sense of importance to places where transparency overlaps and creates an increased depth of colour. You could just map dots in areas. That deals with different population densities and creates a visual density of information instead of... Um, you know, the blockiness of the choropleth. Uh, and here comes a, a real one that I hate. Pause. <laughs> I might not even say anything about that. Um, heat maps. Um, great. Big, colourful splodges with visual, false visual steps in between colours and rainbows and lovely. And it goes up. Poverty extends well into the oceans, apparently. Um, <laughs> Now, there's nothing particularly wrong with m heat maps, but you can make sensible choices. You use a colour scheme that actually promotes it. Um, constrain it to country borders. 
Um, there's still an issue there. Remember the data is point data. So that point in India is just the point of the data, not where there is poverty. So be a little aware of how you're actually interpolating making surfaces. The gray areas on this map, of course, what do we presume? They're all above the poverty line, so we don't need to map them. Well, you look at Ireland and you go to a different scale and you start to create some multivariate uh, cartography and you can see that the majority of Ireland is actually spatially below the poverty line. It's just that many of the major cities are, are not. So that's why the average uh, at a country level skews our perception. Oh, here's a beauty. Whoa, 3D. Um, let's deal with 3D in 20 seconds. Don't. Um, <laughs> at least not on a spinny virtual globe because these prisms all stick out and you've got problems of, of, of occlusion and foreshortening and missing data. And look at India on the left, it's extruded. But the same on the right, it's not because you're simply looking at it vertically. So 3D is horrible. Uh, if you really have to, then flatten it uh, instead of using a curvy f virtual globe. But even this in perspective uh, is problematic because areas in the foreground take prominence over areas in the background, so you get a slight difficulty. And wait for it, because this is going to be a huge change. There we go. Uh, trust me, that's better. It uses an isometric projection, which means that scale is equivalent across the entire thing that you're seeing. So the foreground is at the same scale as the background. So if you must go into 3D and you really want to and you can't avoid it, uh, then that would be uh, one of the ways to go. So that is um, six minutes and 20 seconds nearly. So for the last 19 seconds, um, we all love maps, I know. Um, Well-designed maps help communicate a message better. How, hopefully you all know that. It took me three years to get a PhD in it, but you've had it in just over six minutes. It's brilliant, isn't it? Um, and then fin finally, um, your audience will thank you if you make good decisions. Actually, they won't. They'll never thank you. But you can just re reassure yourselves that you've made a better map. So there we go. Thank you. Yeah.